look, what's wrong is the wrong question. Uh, you can't solve a problem standing in the problem. Einstein said you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created the problem. And what's wrong keeps you in what's wrong. Um, and that's not to say that you're not in you're not aware of the problem, you're not acknowledging the problem, you're not using what people call critical thinking. It's just a a formula, a process of asking the right questions that really gets you to the answers you want. Part of the problem with asking what's wrong is that what's wrong drains your energy. If you ask yourself, um, what's the worst thing that's happened to you? And you start thinking about that, you'll, you'll feel the energy leaving you as you begin to look at what's wrong, what's broken, what, you know, all of that energy just flows out of you. Whereas you start asking what's right, what's, what makes this, uh, what makes this work so well, what makes this right, what, uh, what's great about this, what's fascinating, what's interesting, what's special, what do you appreciate about this? All of those things build energy. So these five right questions, what they're about is starting with the first question, which is, what's right? What makes it work so well? That begins, that sets a positive agenda. And you can feel energy is growing. What's so right about that? What, what's best about that? What makes that work so well? Now, energy starting to build up a little bit. Second question is, what makes that work so well? And that's a question people don't ask. It's one of the real problems in network marketing. Leaders don't ask. Sometimes they ask, you know, what did I do right? What was so successful? But they don't ask what made that successful. And it's why duplication is such an issue for people. Because they just don't know what it is that made it right. What it is that made it successful, important, special, whatever it was. So question number one is what's right. Question number two is what makes that right? What makes that special? And when you ask question number two, now you're talking about values. And you're going beyond the facts and the data. And you're digging down. You're going past knowledge. Knowledge isn't power. Understanding is power. Wisdom is power. And that second question, that's what creates understanding and wisdom. And the third question is, what would be ideal? That's the visionary question. Now you're really, you're out there. You're, you're dreaming of what would be perfect, what would be exactly the result I want. That's the visionary question, what would be ideal? And it takes a lot of energy to entertain that question. And the fourth question is, what's missing? Which if it was put in here, if it was part of the mix, would bring about the ideal. And here you're, um, you're tracing the holes in the vision. Uh, you're, you're literally getting a picture of what needs to be put in place to bring about the ideal, to make the vision real. It's kind of like you're uh, putting the universe on notice, putting creation on notice as here's the hole that needs to be filled. And then the last question is, what's it, what will it take? What will it take to put in what's missing? What will it take to bring about the ideal? Uh, and that question, when all we, when, when one, two, three, four, five, when what's right is followed by what makes it right, is followed by what would be ideal, is followed by what's missing, would, which would, if it was in there, would bring about the ideal. That last question, what will it take, always leads to inspired action.